The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor the show in which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. Always in the upper left on my Zoom, it's Professor Mara Livesey. Yes, it is me. <laughs> How's it going, Mara? Uh, today's a good day. It's beautiful out. It's Friday, and I'm officially done writing every letter of recommendation I've been asked for. Wow, that's a big deal. That is a big, big deal. And I knew that you were going to mention the weather because it essentially looks very fall-like for the next few days. And you and I both know that's the best kind of weather that you can have. So It is. If uh, Detroit was San Diego, this is sort of what it would be like, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. We have uh, Professor Dan Maggio here with us today. He's uh, not going to be camping out to get a haircut next week. I, I'm not. <laughs> I've, I, I thought about it, but um, thought I, about I, it. I am determined to get one, but I'm not going to do stupid things like that. Your hair is really out of control, Dan. You know, I just, it is. You should see me in the morning. It's out of control. Seriously. Hey, I posted But you know what? Post- Everybody else's is too. But you know what? You can't hide it. If you got a haircut and you cheated, you can't hide it. No, it's so, true. It's true. There's some uh, I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying this out loud, but if I don't say any names, I was on a Zoom call recently with someone who shall remain nameless, not related to us or me or anything, and they, they declared that their hair was their livelihood. So they were hunting someone down who could come to their house and, uh, and cut their hair, and I was just sitting there like, mm-hmm. wow. are you- Oh, are you Rapunzel? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> How else would your oh. hair be your livelihood? I'm trying to like make sense of you're that. You're a hair model? No. Oh, the only there thing. you go. No. There you go. Maybe you're, you're, uh, yeah, you're a model and your face. Maybe you're scalp a, model. Scalp model. Shampoo model. <laughs> oh. Well, apparently someone just came home. Uh, a sound Neck possibly model. loud enough. Neck <laughs> model. You <laughs> like me. So when when the door at my house uh, slams relatively loudly, I would guess there's a good chance Professor Dave Chow could hear it. I think so. You're close enough. So, I mean. (laughs) How's it going, Dave? Not too bad. No complaints. Just got done grocery shopping and back for this. Mm -hmm. And be sure to let everybody know what you told us uh, when we first logged in. I said, how did your the birthday festivities go? And you said. Bob (laughs) Kiss did nothing. Day old spaghetti, cold. Ooh, no, I, actually, it's strange because this is the first year I usually go over to Canada for my birthday. And I think about it, this is the first time the border's been locked down over here. That's right. That's right. So it's strange. For at least yeah. another month or so, right? So mm-hmm. kind of sad. Yep. So, oh. Matt, you're not getting any pork buns anytime soon. I hope you can hold out. I have to learn how to make them myself. Other countries are hoping we will keep President Trump behind our locked borders. So right. <laughs> Those, of course, being the dulcet tones of Professor Beth Oljar. Hey, good to be What's here. So you're angling for a haircut, too. Uh, yeah, I actually needed one probably before everything shut down and wasn't mm-hmm. smart enough to, to get that done. So now I either really need one or shut off a video on collaborate have my students look at whatever a blank screen with my name in it <laughs> those are my options yes i i completely completely understand i've run into a few people now you're added to the list who start this kind of a conversation by saying actually the very first day we were sent home i actually had an appointment or something like that so it's been even longer uh, for you, relatively speaking. I only go to supercuts. I do the, you know, I'm not in the expensive salons of, of any sort. So as soon as some place that takes walk-in appointments is open, I'll be, I'll be there. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. 
Um, I'm not sure whether to ask him about hair or not. Professor Prasad Banugopal is with us here today. It's getting it's getting too big, Prasad. It's getting long, isn't it? Yes. Only from the front. <laughs> At the back, it's... So how does your son look by comparison? Your first mullet? In the back, and I hate saying this, at the back, I'm already a Dan Lander, so. <laughs> uh, it shall continue to grow. My idea is not to get a haircut. My idea is to get color in my hair. And, uh, and so I'm still holding out for that. So my wife has set me up to go get a haircut somewhere on Lebanon. Um, so that will happen sometime soon. Well, is this one of those legal places or illegal places? I mean, I wish it were an illegal place. It's very, very legal. In fact, it's like a hair spa or something like that, which for somebody who prefers a $2 haircut and would get it in India if I were there now, I, yeah, see, I, yeah, I took my uh, nephew for a hundred rupee haircut in, when we were in Bangalore, hundred rupees, like a dollar 25. And uh, he survived. So um, <laughs> that's, that's about my standard. That's your standard. Yeah. <laughs> Not like it's uh, the Barber of Seville or Sweeney Todd or anything like that. No. no, no. Well, we are also blessed to have a guest panelist with us here today. Mm -hmm. Professor Jacob Kagi is here from the Department of Biology. It's good to have you back, Jacob. Um, did you say seven years, eight years? It's, it's been a while. I feel like this is like the ongoing uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Matt Damon beef. But it's, it's almost more fun just to keep my fake beef with you going alive. But... I think if, if a worldwide pandemic can't bring us together, then, you know, nothing. What could? I don't even want to know who's Jimmy Kimmel and who's Matt Damon in this equation. People can't tell us apart anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen Jacob since we were finalizing the core curriculum. I feel like if this is a reunion after an incredibly long absence. I know. <laughs> it's now virtual. Hey, come to think of it, it is true. You guys do look alike. Yeah. A lot more these days. Yeah. 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 The next thing that will happen is that Jacob will only start speaking like this. Matt Damon. Yeah, Matt Damon. <laughs> He's thinking about... Team America. Team America, World Police, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, folks, this is a question where you can send, uh, this is not a question, this oh. is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us questions in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu, reach us on the web at udmercy.edu slash atp, find us on Facebook, or God forbid, right, you can listen on your favorite smart speaker by saying, play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. We have a wonderful set of questions here, always with really great background sent into us by longtime question sender, Kimberly Richards of Van Nuys, California. And uh, let's see what we can do uh, to say that Kimberly sends us stuff all over the map is, is being generous. This is a quite a potpourri. What political party did George Washington belong to? It wasn't the Quakers, was it? It wasn't. Federalist, no, I was going to say yeah. Federalists. No. no, it doesn't say that here. Hmm. He couldn't have the Whigs? Are the Republic with the Whigs? Whigs? You know, I would have said Whig if you had asked me, you know, this question point blank, but that's not what it says here. Not the Republican Democrats. And that mm -hmm. came later. Well, no. there were, I mean, there were Federalists and then there were Jeffersonian Republicans, small. The Democratic Republicans, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what it says here is, at least according to this question, George Washington was the only U.S. president in history not to have been really affiliated with any party. In fact, in his farewell address, he warned the country not to divide into political parties. <laughs> Smart <laughs> man. Yeah. Thank goodness for that advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kimberly observes... I probably don't need to say this, but that advice was completely ignored. <laughs> oh my, I'm well, sorry. I think Madison, Madison thought that the heterogeneity of the country would mean that you would basically have a bunch of minority groups that there would have to be such, there would be such shifting alliances and coalitions. Right. It would be difficult for any one group to really get power, certainly. and 
certainly to retain it independently of all the rest. But I think he underestimated the influence of money. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, so in the same vein, but not exactly, uh, previously holding the position as president of Princeton University, which president at the time he took over the United States of America as the executive? Became, yeah, nicknamed yeah. the professor. Yeah, it was Woodrow Wilson. Absolutely. Many, That's many why the center's named after him. White House, really one of our more proud moments, I think. Mm -hmm. It says uh, Wilson had crafted the Versailles Treaty 14 points, the last of which was creating the League of Nations, which, of course, is the precursor uh, to the UN. It's often ranked by historians as one of our nation's greatest. One of our greatest presidents? That's what it says here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which president is mentioned by name in a famous sitcom theme song? It's a good one. Ooh, sitcom. Yep. Something like Frasier? My first choice would be Big Bang Theory because there's lots of stuff mentioned in it. Yeah. That's not what it says here, but I think most of that stuff is kind of sciencey stuff. For so the, the president is mentioned in the theme song for the show. Right. So I'm not telling you the name of the theme song, the song itself, the name of the show, but a president's name in American sitcom theme song. Um, all in the family. Yes, it's I'm all in the family. Way yeah. to go, Michael. <laughs> Herbert Hoover. That's right. Mr. We could use a man like Herbert. Hoover. Oh, yes. Yes. Gotcha. Were the days. Nice one, Michael. That was nice. Yeah. The voice of God. <laughs> yeah. On Zoom. Days when it's people actually... lived in cardboard boxes, of course. You know, we, we could always use those again. Yeah. What are they? What were they? Ho Hoovervilles? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm looking, by the way, at Jacob and Beth in particular. Like, if you enjoy watching a box that's muted with a name in the middle suddenly spout out an answer, then you can teach online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might have to see these students, right? I mean, if I don't require them to turn on their video so I could go a whole semester and teach students that I never see. I mean, yes. not yes. just that, Beth, but if you have a lot of video on not using Zoom, so Blackboard, yeah. you can kind of clog the internet, to, to put it lightly, and everything gets really laggy, so you got to be careful when video is turned on. How is this teaching? Yeah. I'm just... That's a good question. <laughs> no, no answers. I shall muddle through. So even though I said... Well. Right. Uh, even even though I said that this is usually a hodgepodge from Kimberly, of course she's she's got a, a strong theme going here. She's in president for two hundred, Alex. Yes. Which U.S. president once gambled away the White House China in a game of poker? Ooh. Which, Which president? president's got a good tell? That's got to be in the nineteenth century. I'm thinking. It's um, like older. I'm I'm afraid always to guess at these years, and I can hear my my wife's uh, voice, the history major from upstairs. This president is widely described as essentially one of, if not the worst president for an all of American history. Andrew Jackson. Daft. Jackson. Jackson. Johnson. I mean, not what I see here. Oh. Daft. Polk. This president has been described as quote good looking, charming, but out of his depth. And oddly likable. Is that Coolidge? Ineptitude. It was not Coolidge. Mm -mm. That could be Clinton. But... Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> I like saying that name. It's a nice name. <laughs> or like Grover Cleveland, right? Just for the Simpsons yeah. and Yeah, there you go. Okay, one more clue, even though I'm not sure it'll be particularly. Come on, we only got like 45, though. <laughs> He evidently agreed with these quoted assessments. I'm a man of limited talents from a small town. I don't even seem to grasp that I am president of these United States. Polk Buchanan? Somebody already said Polk, actually. Yeah. So Taylor, he was. Timer, Harrison? It says here that it was Warren G. Harding. Ah, uh, yes. President. Okay. Uh, he yeah. also impregnated someone in the. White House, and they, I think they, it later became the Republican cloakroom or something, and they still sort of make notice of that fact. Wow. That's quite a poker game. a mistress, right? There, is there a plaque there now? Probably. <laughs> I slept here and then some? There's a plaque where the China used to be. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the different <laughs> IOU. <laughs> oh okay, which university? Uh, let's be serious here. Um, we're talking about undergrad, grad school, law school can claim the most U.S. presidents as alums. Harvard, Yale? It's Harvard, yeah. yeah. Harvard. The first president to hold a college degree, who was John Adams, graduated from Harvard, as did his son and sixth president, John Q. Teddy Roosevelt, FDR, JFK also got undergrad degrees. Several other presidents attended uh, the university for graduate school. <laughs> Rutherford B. Hayes, Barack Obama, earned their law degrees, and George W. graduated from the business school. So that's, uh, that's quite a list, quite a list. Now, Obama was at her law review when he was there. Mm -hmm. Who, what president of the United States lived at 93 years, 166 days, the absolute longest? Wait a minute, isn't Jimmy Carter? Is that today? Bush? Bush Sr.? It says Bush Senior. It says H. W. Bush, ninety three one six six. So how how old is um Jimmy uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter? I, I would say that I think Carter he's older. Here. It says um so H. W. Bush beat the previous record held by Ford, who was oh my gosh ninety three and one sixty five days when he passed Jerry Ford. At the time of his death in twenty eighteen, Bush was uh, essentially uh, ninety four one sixty four. The all knowing Google says, Yeah, I think Google tells us Jimmy Carter. 95. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't count until you know it's closed. I think Kimberly owes us a monk. I think so. Too. <laughs> all of us a monk. <laughs> right. oh yes. God. Yeah, so it says at the end that uh, Carter is the oldest living and has less than 100 days to beat HW. So, yep, there you go. June 12th, 1924. Just something about, oh, Whoa, that's today's date. That's pretty cool. So happy birthday, President Carter. Oh, what? Oh, today's his birthday. She's 96. Yeah, he's 96. Wait, oh, dang. No, no, no. Carter was born on October 1st. No, wrong person. Oh. Some other Carter. <laughs> Ross Jean, Carter. Some Carter really? was born on October 1st. Carter? Gary Carter. Yeah, Amy. Right. Nobody Gosh. knows where Jimmy Carter is right now. Anyway, he's doing Habitat he's, for Humanity. He's, he's, he's in Georgia at his home and let's see his he's humble a, home in small town he, Georgia. Professor at a, a rough, my alma mater. There you go. There you go. Okay, somebody measured it, and now you get to guess it. How many gallons of paint does it take to cover in one coat the exterior of the White House? Made this in gallons. Yeah. Oh. 100. I would it say more than 100. Probably 1,300. <laughs> it's not 1,300. That's quite a bit too high. Oh, if you put a double coat on. No, no. One coat. One, one coat. coat. One thick coat. <laughs> Back, popcorn spackle. 492. 418. 218. 250. Where's Kendra? I know. A lot of you are at this right order of magnitude, and Heather always makes fun of me for saying that's close enough. It's a 570 gallons. Wow. The last major painting of the White House was in what year? Right now, it's getting whitewashed. Oh, that's what, well, my guess is every they probably paint every seven, seven to ten years. So why don't we say 2012? You know, at least according to these questions, it was 1989. What? Wow. The stripping, when they stripped, they found a minimum of 40 layers, 40 layers of paint that needed to but be removed. That's 30 years that it's been without a, that's impossible. There are houses on my block that have seven years need a paint job. Well, we, <laughs> it's well, we never really painted in 40 years. years. Maybe they, they must use quality paint. I have a quibble as a scientist. You did not indicate whether it was U.S. gallons or British gallons. Uh, very good point. Very good point. I also think the current president probably put aluminum siding on, too. So, Oh, no. He's built himself a wall, and the people oh, have taken it over and decorated it, which is great. So okay. All the fencing Trump put up so he could be, you know, 
serene and secure in the White House, people would put up all kinds of signs about Black Lives Matter and, and everything else. I mean, they're really, you know, so much for the people's house, which it's supposed to be. I can't uh, help but uh, not let this go by without mentioning that uh, one of my favorite internet bits from the last couple of weeks is that one weird night when all the lights went out at the White House. And of course, everybody noticed um, my um, Halloween buddies uh, put <laughs> We'll be opening soon. Spirit Halloween store, like poster, you know, on the White House. And I was like, oh, that's that's cute. That's cute. How many rooms are there in the White House? Two hundred and thirty-four. Too high. Too high. One hundred thirty-five. Are they asking about the residents or including the West Wing? I mean, the White. The phrase "White House" is actually kind of ambiguous. I think that that is true, but um, I I think I just heard one thirty five. It's one thirty two, yeah. is what it says here. One thirty two. Yeah, I was just counting the bunker. That's all. <laughs> oh my gosh! So that total includes the official residence of the first family, which is twenty five bedrooms, three dining rooms, three kitchens, but only one library. Uh, six stories, uh, based on what you can see versus what's underground. Wait a minute, who designed this? Mike Brady? I mean, James there's Hunter. one bathroom for eight people. <laughs> one bathroom. Oh my God. Uh, okay. Homer, Ohio, September 23rd, 1838. Who was the first woman to run for the presidency of the United States? Oh, Jim, no, Jim would know this. Oh, what was her name? Her journal that she published would gain notoriety as the first to publish Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto in English. Was it Emma Goldman? No. No. no that's not what it says here. No, J Jim had mentioned this to us because we've had this before. She actually, was it, she ran for office even though they couldn't vote yet. That's Remember? right. Yeah. She established the Equal Rights Party and ran for the presidency. So she was born in 1838. She ran in 1872. Pre suffrage. But one of the Grimke sisters? No, it says here those were VW. Victoria. Partial VW. credit. Oh. It says here is Victoria Woodhull, was her name. Oh. The first oh. She was uh, the creator, editor, and author of Woodhull and Claflin's weekly newsletter. What? Okay. I put 0.5 because Victoria. I, I'm sorry, my, my subscription to that paper lapse, that's also. <laughs> Which U.S. president purportedly proposed to his wife at their first date? Wilson. Mm -mm. But Wilson's a good answer to pretty much all of these at this yeah. point. It wasn't WW, though. No, I'm going with Carter. It's not Carter. Rutherford um, B. Hayes. <laughs> For <laughs> oh my! Who who is that kind of geeky, gorpy, sentimental? Gerald Ford. You're as close as you could be and still be incorrect. How's that? Ronald Reagan. No. Nixon. Yeah, it was uh, Dick That's Nixon. Nixon. At age 25, it says here Nixon auditioned for a community theater production, where he met Thelma. <laughs> At Ryan, a school teacher, he proposed to her on their first date and she laughed him off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. She Don't sure remained her. laughing him off. <laughs> yeah. She forgot about that, I guess, later on. I, I have to point out that we had a very interesting discussion at the Mayo family um, dinner table a few weeks ago. One of my kids asked me, as if it was like some Simpsons bit, Dad, what's Watergate? So I explained it to them, and then he goes, okay, I want to make sure I get this straight. The president was so shamed that he resigned before anything could be brought against him because they bugged a hotel room? <laughs> and I go, yes, and they're like still processing. So wait for tomorrow. And then I get up from the table and I leave. Like, well, actually, so it was there. the cover-up of the breaking in. And yeah, but it's just. It really was the problem, but yeah. Yeah. For those baby ears, Beth, it seemed pretty tame complaint compared to daily life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my. Who was the got first the EPA out of Nixon? That's right. That's right. We have to admit there was a lot more work to do that. 
in the 70s than it would be today. <laughs> just a tremendous amount true. of work. Just a lot more work to bug a hotel room. True. Like tape recorders were the size of like a human being back then. You know, was... <laughs> <laughs> who was the first uh, U.S. first lady who got married in the White House? Mm. Wilson's second, second wife. wife? Edith <laughs> no. Paul? No. It wasn't Woodrow Wilson. I mean, that would have been that Wilson wasn't the first lady also, but you get the idea. It was, was it, uh, uh, Hugh Wilson. Adams' wife? Mm-mm, mm-mm. And it wasn't Hayes' wife either, Prasad. How about Millard, how about Millard Fillmore? See, that's my other guy. <laughs> my other guy meaning names I like to say? That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Prasad's going to keep on using that till he gets a, you know, till he finds a, a question for it, right? Yeah, the problem is not with the answer. The problem is that the question hasn't shown up. <laughs> So how about some clues? This she would, and this is what was she, married in the White House, right? So she would have gotten married while her then husband was already president. Uh, she was her big claim to fame. Um, my wife is a big first lady historian. Is that she was the youngest first lady by age ever? Jackie Kennedy. Mm-mm. That was a good guess. Um, I like that guess. Good guess though. Who? Like Dolly Madison. She served as the 22nd First Lady until her husband's defeat in 1888. Well, actually, Rutherford B. Hayes is about the right time. (laughs) And just to complete the uh, easy set of clues here, they're not easy. I get that. She also was the 24th First Lady of the United States. Uh, uh, Oh, no, the guy uh, Garfield. Is that it? No. Cleveland. 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 Oh, Cleveland. Francis Cleveland. Francis Cleveland. Well, you got yours, uh, Dave. You got yours. You got Cleveland. Yep. I don't have a horse in the race. So, I mean, I'm... (laughs) Grover's wife. Right. Grover Cleveland's wife. Yes. He He was advanced in age when he married her, but she, her claim to fame, aside from being youngest first lady ever, was she was doing two full-scale black tie ball gown parties a week for the entirety of his first term. So mm. she was wow. she was hot. Wow. And now on the other side of that coin, which first lady banned dancing and card playing in the walls of the White House? Definitely well, not. Yeah. For- <laughs> it had to be somebody really religious. Okay, let's see. Yeah. I'm- who was it? I can't remember who was it. Even Mary Lincoln. Mm-mm. She was a devout Presbyterian and served as First Lady from 1845 to 1849. Wow. Like I said, where's Jim? She forbade her husband as a Sabbatarian Presbyterian from doing any official business on a Sunday. This Taylor, Tyler, one of those T guys? Mm-mm. 18. Oh, I should have. Uh, her, um, her folksy tale, if I remember this correctly from my wife, is she famously turned away a surprise visit from a high ranking Austrian official who came to meet the president on a Sunday morning. Wow, we are not up on our presidents. Okay. Okay. So the initials of the president um, would be J.P. Polk. 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 Yes. Polk. Sarah Childress Polk. Why is nobody getting my answer? I'm not getting credit for anything. I'm very sorry, Beth. I'm sorry. You were just a terrible human being. (laughs) Ah, Hey, look, I asked for Jim Tubbs and there's Jim Tubbs. No, he just like appeared out of nowhere. But he's late. We needed him, what, 10 minutes ago? We need him, (laughs) we need him like during Polk. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, hold on, where? All right, we're going to make this a a, a fair trade. So I I wish you all the the best of luck. We have to go on to the next one, but I'll see you again in eight years. (laughs) In eight years. years. Good to see you, Jacob. So we're glad to have you here, Jim, but I'm looking at my timer and we we literally have 30 seconds left. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> he, he still goes in the sand sheet. He still counts. It's okay. It's okay. I'm I have been on campus and it was quite an experience. Ooh. <laughs> we'll I, think, I think you just need to ask him one question from that president's list. Maybe that last one. Yeah. <laughs> See if he can uh, get it. Yeah. Who, which first lady banned dancing and card playing inside the White House, Jim? She was oh, a it was um yeah, oh, there you go good one Beth. yeah she was a presbyterian you better get this like Jim. what aren't you a presbyterian yes wasn't it um was it Gro no one grover cleveland who was the one after him chester arthur's wife nope nope wasn't rutherford b hayes either <laughs> or millet <laughs> fillmore could have was basically spitballing funny names of presidents couldn't have been Florence Harding or Nellie Taft or Grace Coolidge. Ooh. I think oh, I he's, now he's just showing off with yeah. all the wrong answers. Yeah. I think it was in the 1880s, wasn't it? Uh, this was the 1840s. Oh, 1840s. Oh. Um, hmm. And you did not dance with her Think 5440 or fight. You know what? This makes me feel a lot better because if he didn't get it, what hope did I ever have? Well, Beth right. did actually get it, so she we did. Have but you know, we're not giving her credit for you it. Just so. gave the <laughs> obvious clue, too. <laughs> Jim, it was uh, it was another famous Jim. It was James Polk's wife, Sarah. Oh, James K. Polk. Okay. Hmm? I was thinking there was a teetotaler in the eighties, though. Probably. Uh, hmm. See, I was. I thought Dolly Madison, or who was that one that? She was no teetotaler. <laughs> no, 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 but, no, but there was somebody else that banned, like, who was it, the Christmas trees or something like that, too? Was it something like that? Yeah, I've heard this before. But I don't know. Or was that, or was that like Teddy Roosevelt? I can't remember. Oh, well, no, 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 no. His, no. Edith Roosevelt did not. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, now that we're reminiscing about presidents and first ladies and what have you, uh, the time has come for us. Uh, to say goodbye, so Professor Tubbs. Goodbye <laughs> and hello. <laughs> New goodbye. I'll Professor see you. At the time. Goodbye. Professor Chow. See ya. Professor Maggio. Uh, Dan. Hold on. <laughs> He's doing Bye. a hand sign. Green oh. lips. Goodbye. <laughs> Professor Lindsay. <laughs> Goodbye. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. <laughs> oh, man. As a professor is transcribed from lots of different places that are not the Briggs building on the McNichols campus. As the professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville. And our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>